What a day to be launching a new, a new concept of like a series. And if you hear um, um, what I have in the background, I'm actually doing this right now as I'm watching and listening to um, VS Speaks Royally, which I'm absolutely enjoying. But I also want to get this, this out to you folks today just for entertainment a little bit. So. I do hope you enjoy it. This is a new sort of series concept that I thought of the other day. And um, so welcome to Palace Secrets. And we're gonna have some fun, okay? This is purely for fun. This is a really incredible, very consequential day. And let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. So let's get on with this, with this new series, Palace Secrets. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the premiere show of Palace Secrets. We have assembled, assembled the panel of panels, ladies and gentlemen, and all others. And we've got um, Enrique, who is the LA Entertainment Weekly correspondent. Enrique, welcome. And of course, we snagged Becca, senior editor of Daily Milk. I mean, could it get any bigger than Becca? I don't know. And of course, the, the dick that tells the truth. Here we are, senior editor of Daily Milk Plus. Welcome, Dick. And I hate to say this, but I'm going to my favorite person, Elizabeth from EZ Communications. Well, I shouldn't say from. Elizabeth owns the damn thing, okay? Elizabeth, welcome. It's an honor to have you here. Now, let me make this very, very clear. This is a work of fiction. Names, characters, businesses, places, events, and incidents are either the product of the author's imagination or used in a fictitious manner. Any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, or actual events is purely coincidental. Thank you. All right, with that out of the way, I wanna start with Becca, 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 Becca. So the Royals have been in the headlines, like, I mean, really been in the headlines. This whole thing about the secret money and, and where the Royals get their wealth from. I mean, needless to say, this scandal, this scandal, so, so what do you make of all of this, Becca? What, what, what are your royal insights? Because I know you're very, very, very in touch with the royal. So what do you have for us? Well, I just find all of this very interesting. The timing of it is very suspicious. To me, all of a sudden, the Sunday Times, which by the way it's the Sussex's favorite newspaper, always have complimentary things to say about Meghan and Harry. I think what we should be talking about instead of this fictional story from the Times is Prince William. I will say, you know, it's quite impressive what William is doing right now that what we should be talking about is his trip to South Africa. I mean, I have never seen. Such wonderful welcome. I've never seen a people so. Hungry for the thoughts, ideas, Becca, Becca, the innovation Becca, that Becca, Prince listen. William brings to the De table. Becca, I understand, right, that you may want to change the question, but... This is not your show. And with all due respect, you know how much I love you, but this is a scandal. I mean, this is something that I think is important for us to talk about. I mean, if we have time, we will get to William in South Africa, but I think we need to 
um, really address this. I mean, Dick, what do you think? Well, I have to agree with Becca. This is absolute rubbish. It is absolute nonsense. I think that the real interesting story, what should be making the news, is when Harry was here when he did that so cool special documentary interview with Channel 4 about how the press treated him. He made a secret pact with Channel 4 to disclose all of these false stories about the royal's wealth and where it comes from. That should be the real story. I mean one of my contact sources at Channel 4 told me that they were working on this story for weeks ago. But I wasn't going to say anything about it because I didn't think they would have this sort of low-level trashy garbage mentality to actually print this story and as a matter of fact. This story is completely, according to my source at Channel 4, created and invented by Prince Harry. People should tune in after Dick, this show to my new series. I mean, Megan, really, who is what that? kind of proof do you have of any of this besides saying it's from a source that you have at Channel 4? I mean, if you're going to say you have a source at Channel 4 that is going to, you know, make such, such, such a statement, do you have any proof? Is there anything that you can show to our public that what this source is saying has any validity at all with if you don't have that right then the source is is not really giving us information that that is that is valid at all anyways i'm let's just i'm going to move to um enrique and <laughs> enrique what 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 do you make of all of this no do we lose no, the signal enrique? I'm here. oh oh Oh, I'm Rick, here. Are you okay? I'm here. Are you, are you, I'm here. Are you okay? Okay, I, all right. I just, I just fell off my chair listening to Dick and Becca. I'm okay. For real, I'm okay. I will get up in a minute. Okay, but to say or do not answer the question says a lot about where your mindset is. It is a scandal. To have. Look. If this was private citizens, if this was just. Private wealth that was accumulated privately then we wouldn't have anything to talk about here. But this is the monarch. This is wealth that is being accumulated on the backs of your subjects. It's like, the feudal times never ended and on top of that, they get all this money from that grant sovereign, something like that. Whatever it's called. So they get all this money from the taxpayers. Right then, all of their big ceremonies and pomp and ceremony and this and that is all paid for by the government. To celebrate this person's birthday, all paid by the government. And then you own most of the lands that you stole basically or took from people or took from the nation. Back in feudal times. And you, you are charging not just private citizens, you charge the NHS. That's the one that gets to me, like the healthcare stuff, you're charging them and on top of that, you're getting free publicity from the charities even though you are charging your charities that you have represented. Listen. I think I'll do the rest of the show from the floor. Because the more I think about this, the more I am just appalled by all of it. <laughs> well, Enrique, I hope you don't do the rest of the show from, from the floor. Um, we, we, we do want to see you. Uh, I, I, I think you raise some really valid points here, right? Because it is a scandal. I mean, especially with, with, with things like the armed forces, the Navy, the waters that are in the coastal, um, I mean, Britain is an island. So you mean to tell me that the king owns all the coastal areas, all the waters, so the Navy needs to pay the king to do their job, like, in the coastal areas? Like, that, that doesn't, you know, it doesn't compute for me. And... To just sweep this under the rug like it's nothing, it's it's a little bit problematic, especially when, I mean, I don't mean to say this, but people have been criticizing, I mean, Megan and Harry for working and building their own wealth. They are not getting money off of the taxpayers. They're building their their own wealth, doing their own thing. If they need to write a million books, if they need to like do two hundred documentaries on their life. That's their business. They are making their own money. So, Elizabeth, I'm coming to you. You know I'm coming to you. So, what is your take? 
A man who holds the farm tools and yet says he has no food is either foolish or greedy. When the rat in the house is feeding fat, the rat outside gets nothing. Those are words from my dear Nigerian mother. So, the bottom line is this, I understand very clearly that the royals, the monarch has had this set up, for them a long time ago, right? And the intention of it is for the monarch to never really go poor or to be in need of money, and they will always have this wealth. Here is where I think we get to see their greed. Knowing the difficulties that Britain has gone through these few years, knowing that there are people who can't afford to heat their homes in the winter. Senior, old people on a fixed income can't afford it. After all of the punishment this nation has suffered under the Tories. Now we have Labour in government and they want to fix things, but in order to fix things they are telling us that common folk will have to suffer some more. On top of all of that. The monarch who pretends to be above all of this. Ordained by God is also filling their pockets because I would say that a monarch that cared for its people would say, I will not take any money from the sovereign grant. We have this wealth. That, by the way, we get from you folks. And we will dip into our own personal wealth, quote unquote, until maybe the nation is in better standings, in order for us to get maybe a lower percentage. I mean, this is not. This this is. This is appalling. But I'll tell you this, Antonio, nothing is going to happen. Absolutely nothing will happen because the Labour Party has no interest in touching the monarch or the royals. No interest whatsoever. And. Britain at large seems to have just this apathy. What can we do? And it's just frustrating, you know. What can we do? And carry on. I just find it sad. Really sad. Because I think neither the King nor Prince William have the moral fortitude to understand why it would be important for them to do right by their subjects. Sorry, King Charles III, Prince of Wales William? Who the fuck do you think you are? So one week ago, we've had William all over the TV talking about ending homelessness or let's all work together to defeat homelessness. This week, we find out he's charging charities, the NHS, the Ministry of Defence, schools, councils, rent, and making millions of pounds. Fucking hell, he's not the 1400s, what the fuck? Because of the way these duchies are set up, they don't pay corporation tax. They make millions of pounds worth of profit and pay zero tax on it. Excuse me, where the fuck is Robin Hood when you need him? Like, it's one thing if you were charging businesses, but charging other government departments, schools, councils, the NHS to park ambulances in a warehouse when they're not in use. Where are your morals gone? Your morals have proceeded like your fucking hairline, William. I mean, seriously, take the money, go to Turkey, get that sorted out. If you're going to, like, you know, live the life of a mafia gangster, at least have the looks to go with it. Do you know what I mean? And yet we spent years attacking Harry and Meghan for earning their money privately. Like... <laughs> Fucking hypocrites. Honestly, enough's enough. That's it. Not my king. Fucking get rid of all of them. Well, Elizabeth, you said it. You said it. I'm going to stick with you. Um, what What is your take on the royal visit tour that just concluded? of Australia and Samoa. Um, what's, what's the general take on, on it? Antonio, really? Where do I start? No, really where do I start? Number one, if you're going to do these tours to countries you've colonized, how about you are prepared with a statement once you get there or before you get there, apologizing for the atrocities that were committed while you were the colonizer? How about you get there and you have a proposal or a plan to make things better. How about when you get there in a senator, an elected senator of that nation? Protest your presence in that nation for the atrocities you did to their people. You at least acknowledge it. You at least apologize for it. But no. None of that. But what we have and I'm sure Becca and Dick are going to, you know, have a problem with what I'm saying, but they know it's the truth. And then I kept thinking. Imagine. Imagine for just one second, if Meghan, Rachel, Markle, had behaved in the way that that washed up, I'm going to get myself into trouble. If that woman, some of you call Queen, behaved. Imagine if the Duchess of Sussex had showed up half-wasted or completely wasted. I don't know what would have happened, and that walkabout, Jesus save me. She didn't even look at the people. And... 
King Charles came over to her and was like, listen, B what are you doing? Right. Then she decides just take her shoes off. And all the other instances where I don't even. And the giggles. The freaking giggles and laughing at people's culture, their traditions. This isn't the first time it's happened and not the last if they continue to do these tours as the palaces indicated, it's going to happen again. It's just absolutely appalling and disgusting. If Meghan Markle had done not even a quarter of what that woman did. These royal rotors would have had something to really complain about. But did you hear anything about it? Not a word. I rest my case. Oh. This is what my Nigerian mother would say. If the chicken had white feathers, it would condemn the dove for being dirty. A person who criticizes the scent of another's fish should check their own pot. I, I, just, I just have to say this, Elizabeth. I could sit and listen to Nigerian sayings all day long. What did you just say? If, if the chicken had white feathers, it would condemn the dove for being dirty. <laughs> A person who criticizes the scent of another fish should check their own pot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dick, what do you think? I don't believe there is a colonial aspect to Australia. Look, Captain Cook arrived in Bodney Bay in 1770, that's when he landed, that's when we first set foot on Australia. We don't. We didn't colonize the place, we built it, they should be grateful. I mean have you ever been to Sydney or Perth these are magnificent fantastic. Modern cities and they were built once settlers from Europe got there and developed the country like many other parts of the world and it's a wonder. I don't know what that woman Lydia was yelling about, I don't get it. She was rude and offended the king. He has cancer, how dare she speaks to king like that. She is lucky the days of these talking about you stole our lands what lands did we steal and who owns them if they were stolen from you, just rubbish, if the king had absolute okay, power, okay, which okay, I think he should, okay, she would be on her way to that. finish that sentence, I would recommend you rethink how you would want to end that sentence. Um, and, and I think, you know, you need to do a little bit of more research into the history of Australia and the history of what has happened is still happening to its indigenous peoples, right? And, 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 and I think it is very short-sighted um, to say the things you just said. Uh, having said that, um, Enrique, what are, what are your thoughts on this? If you don't mind, Antonio, I would like us to listen to this. People who respect what you're saying, what were you, what were you hoping to achieve with your protest yesterday? I wanted the world to know the plight of our people in this country. We are Australia's little secret that, you know, doesn't get talked about in terms of what we have to deal with. Uh, and what we have had to deal with since colonisation, uh, we have 24,000 Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children in out-of-home care in 2024. It's worse than the stolen generation. We have over 600 deaths in custody that we know about. That does not include babies who've uh, died in the system. So without justice, what do we have? We have no peace. I've written to the king a number of times. He's ignored me every time. I wanted to have a respectful conversation and meeting about the plight of our people and what we want, what my old people have told me all of my life. And that wasn't afforded to me. So I did that for my people. I did that for my grandmother. And I wanted the world to know that we need a treaty here. And we want an end to this ongoing war against First Peoples in this country. There are many people who respect what you're saying, but don't respect how you delivered it. For example, former Senator Nova Paris said, if you weren't on board with this, you shouldn't have accepted your position in the Senate in the first place. What do you say to that? I don't subscribe to assimilating myself into the colonial structure. I will be there for another three years, everybody. So, uh, you know, get used to truth-telling. My approach 
unfortunately might upset a few people. But how else do you get your message across when we're continued, continually shut down as black women? The only people they want to hear from are ones that conform and speak nicely, but do nothing about getting justice for our people. I'm not looking to be re-elected. I'm looking to get justice for my people. If you listen to what the senator just said and you still think this is nonsense, you've got a problem. This woman is speaking up for the way her people have been treated. She tried to meet with the king several times and she was ignored. So, blame the king and the idiots around him that advised him not to meet with Senator Lydia. Imagine the goodwill the king would have gotten if he had sat down with her. Now, in regards to the tour in general, I have to agree with Elizabeth. For me, it's not important if people showed up to see him and his wife. But the UK has had decades to think about this and how they will respond in a fair way. If the monarch and the political establishment would have said, we are granting all Commonwealth's countries preferred trade status or free trade agreements. We want what the governments of that country established grants for any indigenous person seeking higher education. There is so much that can be done. They had decades to do something, and know you bring the excuse that the king has cancer, so we must all be nice. Read a little to the horrible things that was done to the indigenous people of Australia and as Senator Lydia said, is still happening, 600 people dead in the hands of cops and not one cop was found guilty. It was a complete fail. I am not even going to talk about the disrespect of the king's wife. Shame on her. Charles has the wife he deserves and wanted. You see, with all due respect, white people will never understand our pain until it happens to them. Okay, Becca, um, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say. I mean, you were there, so what is your take? Well, I was there, and I can talk about what the actual facts are, not some fantasy or delusion. I can tell you what actually happened. I have to say that the king and queen were received so magnificently, I have never seen anything like it. I've been doing this for what? Maybe 30 years now? I have never seen a reception so wonderful. I know here in the UK there's lots of people who are worried about Australia becoming a republic. Well, Australia is not becoming a republican, not after the generous amount of people that showed up to greet the king and queen. I will say in regards to that, Senator, she does not speak for the natives. I had several native people come up to me, to say how sorry they were, one of them even started crying, she was so ashamed. Lots of indigenous people don't like her. So, as a person who was there, actually there, I would say this was one of the most successful tours I've ever, ever seen. I mean, with the king having cancer. I don't want to get emotional over this but, you know, I think about my grandfather. I think about the king and his strength. He had like 85 or maybe 100 things to do each day and yes, once in a while you can see how tired he was. Once in a while, you know, he might have closed his eyes for a second or two, but it was incredible and the welcome he received in Samoa was a welcome meant for a real king. Only a real king would ever get such a welcome. If the Montezito set think they were received like king and queen, think again. Only real royals get this kind of reception. It was a resounding success and it was such a success that the palace is already planning future tours. We should be talking about Meghan's fail attempt to run in California to become a senator and the people there completely rejected her no one wanted. Okay, 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 Becca, I've got to stop you there because like, this is not to do anything with Meghan or Harry and I don't understand why you keep trying to bring them into this conversation. This conversation has nothing to do with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. So bringing them into the conversation with something completely unrelated makes no sense to me, number one. And number two, I don't know how many times one has to say that Megan has not said she's running for anything. She hasn't said she has any intention to go for political office or anything like that. These are just creations that are invented in 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 a lab somewhere or maybe in some people's brain that she's she's she wants to do any of this so let's keep the facts factual and let's keep it real here right this is not 
some other show where people are allowed to just come with their own facts and invent their own things. So I will say, Becca, like there was a good amount of crowd from what I can see showed up, but I, I really resent the way you are portraying Senator Lydia. I, I, I don't think that is completely fair. And these indigenous, um, other indigenous leaders that you say you spoke with, do you have them on, 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 on tape? Do you have them on video? Is, is, is there a clip you have um, of you having the conversation with them? Because if, if you don't have any of those things, then it's just hearsay. It's just you saying that you had these conversations and we don't know whether they're factual or not. I mean, I don't mean to, to be blunt and forward with you, but the intention here is that, you know, we, 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 we bring the receipts. So if you're going to say what you're going to say, bring the receipts. I mean, Enrique brought his receipts. So we can't just invent things. Look, I'm going to take your word for what you said because you were there. But this other stuff, come on, Becca, come on. You know better. Okay, so I was told that we were having some um, sound issues. It seem, seems like, you know, someone might have not been happy with what we were saying. But anyways, our wonderful technicians have fixed it. And with that, I will say um, this is the wrap up of our very first Palace of Secrets. I hope <laughs> you enjoyed it. And I hope we still have a show next week that we'll be back again. And for our wonderful panelists, um, I know some of you are not happy right now, but thank you for being here. And I do hope you come back next week again. And um, for you, I hope this was entertaining. I hope you had some fun. I hope you laughed a little bit. And that was the intention of Palace of Secrets. Now on a serious note, as we await the results, Let's take a moment to reflect on what this election truly represents. Beyond the candidates and policies, it's a testament to our shared hopes, our voices, and our belief in a future we all share together. This pause before the outcome is a powerful reminder. We are bound not by our differences, but by our commitment to strive for something better. Something that speaks to the best of all of us. I know what the results that I wish to be reality. But I also must say, no matter the result, let's remember that change doesn't start or stop with one election. The strength of a nation lies in the resilience of its people, in the courage to face challenges, and in the compassion we show one another. Our unity, our voices, and our actions, these are the true markers of a democracy. Democracy must win. Democracy will win. I love you all. Thank you for taking the time to come and spend this 30 minutes here with, with me to get your minds off a, a little bit. And now if you're anything like me, I'm going to be running back to the television and um, watching what is happening. And uh, most likely, I'll do my best to join um, Royal Sussex with Baron later this, this um, evening. And I love you all. Thank you very much. And until we speak again, be kind to yourselves. Okay? Bye for now.
Satisfied 